We have started our Facebook Live. Um, I'm so excited to have Hector Padilla here. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. Hector, you've truly been one of my inspirations. And it's, it's difficult for me to say that because you were always like my best friend's little brother from in high school but look at you now we are at his million dollar hollywood hills home and it's it's amazing your journey is is just amazing because obviously you didn't start off living in the hollywood hills right your journey is is very vast but obviously brought you to living the good life that's correct and something that i'll say with that is uh, right now before you sat down there was a, a little spot on the chair and it was bird shit okay it was literally <laughs> shit and what I was telling Naive is, I said, look, that's a valuable lesson right there. Um, don't let people shit on your day. Don't let people shit on your dreams and on your goals. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I started off as a little boy working, washing dishes, stuffing envelopes, paper route. I know a lot of you guys had a paper route out there. And uh, making minimum wage, etc. If I would have told people, someday I'm going to live in a multi-million dollar house in the Hollywood Hills, the house in front of me... You guys are probably hear some of the construction noise. That house is an escrow for forty-seven million dollars. The house behind me, behind this hill, sold for seventy-five million dollars. So if I would have told somebody, I'm going to be driving a Rolls Royce, I'm going to marry my dream woman, I'm going to live in the Hollywood Hills, they would have shit on my dreams. Right. Okay. So the the goal, with, the message with that is, don't let people shit on your day. Right. Don't let people shit on your goals. Just go forward, focus, and give it all you got. So you are obviously, as you mentioned, you're living the dream, but not just living the dream, you're actually living the good life. I think another reason why I admire you is because you have such a good balance of, you know, you work hard, you play hard, you enjoy life, you don't let little things kind of boggle you down. So why don't we start there? Like, talk to us about your mindset. So my mindset is that everything I do I do it for one word, and that one word is lifestyle. So lifestyle means what kind of car do you want to drive? What kind of restaurants do you want to eat at? What kind of vacations do you want to take? So for example, last year we took a 43-day vacation to Europe, and we took our little girl, our traveling house manager, grandma and grandpa, and uh, we just got back on Saturday from a 23-day vacation through Mexico. So all of that is part of your lifestyle. It's what restaurants do you want to eat at? What kind of home do you want to live in? Uh, what kind of vacation home would you like to have? That All of that is part of that one word, and it's lifestyle. Right. So, for example, if someone's watching us now and is living in a small little apartment, is at a 9-to-5 job they hate, what's the first step? Because I think the lifestyle you're living, we all want to live it. We all want to travel the world. We all want to enjoy the finer things in life and what's the first step though to get there so everybody talks about you know the the so-called gurus talk about um the key to success right or the key to wealth i'll tell you right now that's bullshit there is no one key to anything it's more like a combination of things mm -hmm. and that combination continues to change as you grow as you accomplish your goals mm -hmm. but what i would say is that when you, when you want to create that exponential growth, when you want to pivot, and what a pivot means is like, like Naiba, you just said, from a 9 to 5 job, and you want to pivot and you want to start your own business. You want to pivot and you want to become an entrepreneur. You want to pivot and get into investing in real estate. I think that in order to do that, you need five things. So I think number one is self-esteem. you got to feel good about yourself, okay? And... Something that will help you with that is understanding that we're all humans. And all humans are deficient, contradicting, and emotional. So if you're a little, a little overweight like myself right now, okay, after being on a 23-day vacation, um, if your nose is not perfect, whatever it may be, you can still feel good about yourself knowing that there is no such thing as a perfect human. And we all know that those beautiful models, we all know that they're uh, airbrushed and they probably go on a strict, strict diet for three months before the shoot, right? Okay, so, um, so self-esteem, feel good about yourself. Number two is your self-confidence. And the way you're going to get self-confidence is by mastering your line of business. So if you told me to get up on stage right now and talk about rocket science, my self-confidence would be way down. 
if you told me, hey, talk about investing in real estate, investing in apartment buildings, my self-confidence would be way up. So you got to master whatever you want to get into, and that's going to build up your self-confidence. Number three is you got to take massive, skilled action with adjustments. Okay? Massive, skilled action with adjustments. The other part is, I would say, is your philosophy. So what is your business and your life philosophy? So for me in real estate, when I got in, um, everybody said, oh, you couldn't you know, flip houses because the market was too hot, yet I was doing it. Then later I got into apartment buildings and they said the same thing, oh, the market's too hot, you can't do it, but I was doing it. So you gotta see what is your business and your life philosophy. The next thing that I would say is you gotta have a time proven mentor. If you want to get there quick, and what I'm talking about quick is the next 12 months, within the next five years, you need to have a mentor that can show you how to get there, how not to make the big mistakes, how not to go bankrupt, how not to go broke. Okay, So a mentor that has been there and done that. So I would say those are the five things that you need to be able to make that pivot and um, you know, change your life, change your line of work, uh, change your business. That's what I would say. Perfect. And you were saying about mentor. I think... It's hard to find a mentor in our busy society because back in the day, you found your mentor when you, you know, back when we, before there was sophisticated cities, everyone kind of lived in a tribe, in a communal. So you went to the wise old man, you went to the wise older woman. But in this society, we're all living in our own little bubble. How do you know where to find a mentor, who the right mentor for you is? Um, you know, how much to pay for mentorship? Do you pay for mentorship? How do you find that mentor? So I like going by time-proven wisdom. Okay, right now, I think, the, especially the younger generation, I think right now you guys are drowning with data. Right. Just so much data is coming at you through Instagram and Facebook, and you guys are just drowning in data, but you're starving for time-proven wisdom. So for that, I would say is uh, three things, and this lesson is about 2,500 years old. Mm -hmm. And it says, seek and you shall find. Ask and you shall receive knock and the door shall open so when you're looking for that mentor you got to keep that in mind okay so seek and you shall find knock and the door shall open ask and you shall receive but that's not to say that it's easy right. so i say it's simple yes easy no mm -hmm. but you can find that mentor and something else I say with the mentor, my dog is We have a lap. third uh, interviewer here, right? <laughs> no, <you're... laughs> but my little dog is sitting on her lap. That's a good sign. That means that you have a good heart, a good soul, good energy. The uh, doggy test. test. Yeah. <laughs> um, so something else with the mentors, I say, I also tell you know, my students this. I'm in the real estate business, okay? Um, I say, if you want to learn how to do great open houses, then find a mentor that does great open houses and can teach you how to be a great realtor. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a listing agent, find a mentor that is a great listing agent. Mm -hmm. If you want to get into the real estate acquisition business, which is the business that I'm in, which is buying apartment buildings, buying motels, and buying commercial office space, and I'm focused at a million to 25 million. So if you're looking for, so if you want to get into that space, find a mentor that's doing that. Um, you know, one of my past mentors, I think I mentioned this on, um, when we were talking earlier, is one of my mentors said, um, I wanted to make the shift from flipping houses to getting into the multi-million dollar deals. And he said, Hector, if you plant potatoes, don't expect to get tomatoes. And if you plant tomatoes, don't expect to get potatoes. He goes, have a good day, Hector. And he hung up on me. And I was like, what did, what did he say? <laughs> I didn't get it. Okay. But what he's saying is, whatever you look for, that's what you're going to find. So if I was looking to become an expert in open houses, that's what I was going to become. If I was looking to get into the apartment business um, and purchasing apartment buildings, then that's what I was going to find. And so that's what I'm looking for right now. And so that's what I'm finding because that's what I'm focused on. And you, were, you mentioned earlier about that this society nowadays, we're drowned in data, so much you know, programs that are thrown at us, like buy this or so many Instagram people to follow, et cetera. How do you kind of organize your mind to go? And I was telling you earlier, personally, I feel overwhelmed sometimes. I'm a mom to two kids. I have a couple of businesses that I'm trying to, you know, run. Um, but I'm still kind of at the same level that I've been at in the last two to three years. And, and I'm trying to figure out how do I 
take it to the next level. And, you know, it's, it feels overwhelming. So people that are watching us that maybe are in a similar situation, how do they kind of take it to the next level within that overwhelm? You know, again, you know, people talk about that key to success, right? Or the key to living the good life. There is no key. It's a combination. Mm -hmm. And the combination changes as you grow. But I'll tell you this much. Um, I'm the same thing. I'm a, I'm a full-time father. Um, I have a three-year-old. I'm happily married to my first wife and hopefully my, yes. my one and only wife, right? Um, I'm very devoted to my parents. I, I travel with them. I make all their dreams come true. Um, so, so it is hard to have that family and to have the business and then for me also to be out there and try to be that mentor to my students it is it, and there's Zax <laughs> actually not being like in you like so so um so what i would say to that is two things one is goals okay we all have goals right but then you're going to have your values your values so your goals are going to change like the weather but your values are like the climate. Mm -hmm. So, for example, your goal may be to make a million dollars this year. That's your goal. You know, maybe you'll adjust it later and say, you know what, I want to make 500000 Or you're going to adjust it and say, I want to make $5 million. But that's going to change. That's right. a goal. A value is you being the good mother that you are. Is you saying, you know what, I want to be there for my son, Brayden. I want to be able to take him to school. I want to be able to pick him up from school. I want to be able to have dinner with him, right? So try to definitely stick with your values as you work on your goals. The other thing that I will tell you with that is, you know, I think this still, you know, falls in line with that pivot, changing from one to another thing, right? So, you know, you're doing one part in your business and you want to pivot and do something a little different. So what I would say is, what are your five to seven daily rituals mm -hmm. or daily habits? And I tell people, show me your five to seven daily rituals that you've been doing for the past five years and I will show you why you are where you are, okay? So for me, um, my daily rituals is number one, I, I write them down every day. So what time? Like, do you write them down in the morning, at night? No, first thing in the morning, I write it down. And what I write down is I put Bella, that's the name of my daughter, and I spell Bella, B-E-L-L, -L, heart, for Bella. So I want to spend time with her every morning, uh, getting her lunch ready, having breakfast with her, playing with her a little bit, and then she goes off to school, to preschool. So Bella is, is one of my daily rituals. The same thing at nighttime. I want to be able to spend time with her. Mm -hmm. The second time is reading. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got to do your daily reading. One of my mentors once told me, um, he said, miss a meal, but don't miss your reading. And people say, well, I don't have time to read. No, you have time to read. You just don't make the time. You rather get your grub on, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> or, so, or like Play on media, or play on social media, watch TV, right. read the newspaper, read a magazine, but you have time to read quality books. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second thing is audio programs. Mm -hmm. I listen to audio programs every day while I'm getting ready, taking a shower in the morning, when I'm at the gym, um, when I'm driving to work, when I'm driving to go see clients, to appointments, etc. I'm always listening to audio programs. So that's another one. The other one is what I call meditation and prayer, okay? So every morning I meditate and I pray. And every night uh, I say a little prayer. The other thing that I do is daily prospecting. Even if, for, you know, I have a whole team now behind me, but even if for me nowadays it's, you know, one or two phone calls or a lunch meeting or a dinner meeting, but I still do some form of prospecting. The other part is the gym. And if I don't go to the gym, I at least drive by it and, and, I wave, and I wave at the gym. Okay, but I do try to work out five days a week, even if it's only for 30 minutes. I just try to get, uh, get my workout in. You know, I'm 43 years old now, so for me, now it's not about being ripped, right? Um, now it's just about trying to stay healthy and being able to live a long, healthy life because I want to see my little girl grow up. Okay, so what are your five to seven daily rituals? The other one that I would say with you is you got to change your circle of influence. And what I mean by that is, what are the five people that you're surrounding yourself with? I say, are they chimps, chumps, or champs? And in order for you to grow, because you're already at a pretty good level, right? So in order for you to take that next step, you got to really change that circle and get that mentor, get that coach, up your game, get a new team, and that's how you're going to grow. you got to change your environment. Um, when I first got started in real estate, I used to drive a Honda Accord. 
great little car, right? Great little car. And uh, the people that I was surrounding myself with, they had the, the Toyotas and the Hondas and et cetera. And that's fine. But I wanted to take a step up and I wanted to see, you know, how do I get the Mercedes? How do I get the BMW? So when I changed my environment and I hired a new coach and a new mentor, then I got my Mercedes. Then I, I took another step and now I'm driving the Rolls Royce. So you got to change those five people that you're really surrounding yourself with because, you know, they, they kind of say that you will be the average of those five people. And you said something about hiring a mentor. And I feel like in the Latina and Latino community, sometimes we're ad averse to spending money to invest in ourselves or in our company because we want, I think, I see the philosophy is that we're scared to let go of money um, because we kind of feel like we can do it all or, or we're, maybe we're scared we're going to be scammed or et cetera. But, you know, th this is something I bear. I just recently started. It was very, very difficult. And I resisted for many years of hiring other people to do some tasks. Like, I, I'm going to admit this. I hired a lady to come do our laundry yeah. because laundry takes a long time. And I felt like I was disappointing my husband because he would run out of underwear. <laughs> 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 and he would come shaved every day after and, and I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, yeah. And I was like, Oh, I could do it. I could do it. I could do, I could do laundry in between meetings. I could do laundry. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to experiment. And I hired this lady from El Salvador. She comes like twice a month. I pay her 80 bucks every time she comes to do all of our laundry. And it, trust me in the beginning, it kind of hurt to give away that money. Right. But then and then I hired another assistant to do other tasks. So talk to us about, you know, delegating and paying out people to do other, you know, jobs so you can kind of do more jobs that are. You know, with, with that with that question, I feel like I have so much that I want to say, um, but I, I, I don't want to overwhelm people. But here's what I would say. Number one, when I talk about a team, yeah. I'm talking about your empire, your palace. OK. That's how you guys got to think about life is how are you going to build your empire, your palace? So part of my team is I have a full-time house manager. She cooks for us. She cleans. She runs our errands. Um, she's a full-time house manager because I don't want my wife doing those things. I want to be able to spend time with my wife going out to dinner, going out to breakfast. I don't want her spending the time doing laundry. Right. I don't clean my pool. I have somebody cleaning my pool, doing my landscaping. Here's a valuable lesson. I call it NRM, non-refundable minutes. You guys got to think about that, okay? You have a limited amount of time every day. So you got to think about non-refundable minutes. How are you investing or how are you wasting your minutes? Right. So part of that team is having that house manager or in your situation, having that housekeeper, if she, even if she only comes in once a week or twice a month, whatever it is, but you got to delegate. You're never going to meet any high performer that doesn't have coaches and mentors and a team. Right. Um, but what, how do you respond to people that say, I can't afford a house manager. I can't afford someone to do my laundry. I can't afford. How, what's your response? Because I think that's, that's the reaction. Okay, so let me go back before I remind me to come back because I'm a little ADD, so I'm <laughs> going to forget what you just said. But um, what was I going to say? See, I already forgot what I was going to say. I distract. It's okay. Uh, what was I going to say? About the team building the empire, yep. non-refundable minutes. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Okay, so regarding the mentors and hiring a mentor and hiring a coach, right. okay, I agree with you. The Latino community has a hard time paying for a mentor, right. paying for a coach, right? So the way you need to see it, it's cost versus value. If you read a book, and the cost of that book is $25. And you read the book, and because you read the book, you do not have a heart attack. Right. Okay? The cost was 25 but what's the value of the book? Priceless. Mm -hmm. Because now you're alive. Mm -hmm. right? right? The same thing with me as your mentor. If you hire me as your mentor, and you pay me X amount of money, right? Mm -hmm. But I teach you how to, became, how to become a mega millionaire. I teach you how to start your own real estate acquisition and investment firm, then what's the value in that? 
versus you can go out there and try and do it on your own, but it may, it may take you 20 or 30 years and you may still never do it, okay? So there's a price to action. I paid one of my mentors $50,000 for eight meetings. I paid another mentor $25,000 to be mentored by him for eight days and then having one call per month for one year. But the value was there. Right. The worth was there. So people, people focus so much on holding on tight to their pennies. Oh, I'm going to hold on to my pennies, right? And they waste the dollars. They waste their wealth. Right. They waste their time. Mm -hmm. So I would, tire, I would say um, invest in a time-proven mentor, someone that has been there and done that. Whatever you want to do, someone else is already doing it. So give them a call and see if they will mentor you. And if you have to pay them, that's fine. Their time is very valuable, especially if you're talking about a high performer. Did I answer your question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I asked uh, basically about the, you know, when you start out small, I think if you're scared to invest thousands of dollars, you could start off investing a small amount just to kind of get that extra that thing going right like you can start off by investing in a book right. how much is a book 20 bucks maybe 25 dollars so start a reading program daily how much is an audio program the same thing 15 20 25 dollars right but i'll tell you guys this too when you get a book get a book by a time proven author someone that you're going to learn something from not you know, some young person that has no experience that's telling you how to live a happy marriage and they've never been married. Okay, so get someone that's time proven. Wow, Hector. <laughs> Another thing I like about your mentorship is like no holes barred. Like you don't coddle people. I think in this society, a lot of people are used to being coddled. And talk to us about that, your no holds barred type of style, mentoring style. So that hits a little, uh, that hits my, uh, my backbone when you ask that because too many people have a wishbone. Mm -hmm. They wish this and they wish that, but they have no backbone. Right. I think um, a lot of our society needs a strong backbone. Mm -hmm. And everybody's looking how to get rich quick, right? right? right. So you hear all these little gurus and, and they're talking about how easy it is to become a millionaire and a mega millionaire. And then you see these what I call wannabes taking a picture in the front of a Rolls Royce, but it's not theirs. Right or they're taking a picture at some high-end hotel, but they're not staying in the room. Um, so they're wannabes. So what was your question? I just forgot. About your mentorship, your style. I love your style. Okay, so I say all that because when somebody will ask me, what does it take to do what you're doing? Everybody wants to live the lifestyle. They want to you know, take the 43-day vacation. Uh, they want to have the house manager. They want to live in a multi-million dollar uh, home, etc. But they don't want to do the work. So when they ask me, what does it take? I always tell them, it takes hard fucking work to live the good life. Right. And most people are scared about that because they want to hear how you can get rich quick. Right. So for me, I'm not interested in, in uh, mentoring or coaching the masses. Um, I only mentor seven students per year. That's it. That's not my full-time job. My full-time job is my real estate acquisition firm and my lifestyle, spending time with my family. That's what I do full-time. Uh, part-time, I'm a part-time mentor. Okay, I only do, again, seven students per year. That's it. Um, so for me, I want students that are serious. Mm -hmm. I don't want students that don't want to work, uh, that think uh, they're looking for the next quick scheme or the next Bitcoin or <laughs> some shit. Right. Um, so I tell it how it is. It really does take hard work. And if you, if you ever meet anybody that's a mega millionaire and they've held on to their wealth for 10 years or more, not someone that made a quick million or a quick five million, but someone that's living the lifestyle and has done it for 10 years or more. Right. Um, they're going to tell you it's hard work. Right. But once you build the empire, yeah. so like for me, now that I've built my real estate holdings and I got my passive income, I don't have to work that hard anymore. Right. right? right. So you build it up. Now you got that passive income coming in. You got the wealth. You can leave it as a legacy. You can leave it as part of your inheritance and you can live the good life. And I vouch for you so much because I've known you most of your life, pretty much. And I remember a picture you had of you breaking a piggy bank and all the pennies or, you know, coins coming out. And you used that to buy your first property. And that was years ago. So you 
did put in the time and you're still putting in the time. For someone that's just starting in any business, do they really have to work 12 hour days? Is that what it takes or, or what, I mean, how, when you say putting in, it takes hard F and work, what does that mean? When you say it takes hard, don't say F and just say it takes hard fucking work. I know, but I'm a, I'm a reputable journalist. I can't <laughs> say that word. You got to feel it. That's why I use the word, okay? I use it for uh, emotional impact. Um, your question was, what was your question? My question was, so what does hard F and work look okay. like? So again, people say, oh, Hector, how did you do it so quick? All right, okay. <laughs> Apple Watch, I can answer or decline right on my wrist. All right. So what I tell people when they say, how did you do it so fast? Um, I tell people, I only worked half days. That's it. Just I only work half days. So they come back and they're like, wow, so you only work four hours a day, right? And I'm like, no, I only worked the first 12 hours of the day or the second 12 hours of the day. And that's what I call a half day. So if you want to create that exponential growth, yes, you're going to have to put in 10, 12-hour days. And sometimes when you're just in that zone, it's a 15-hour day. But here's the beauty with that. When I was growing up, when I was building my empire, when I was in that zone and I would work a 12-hour day, a 15-hour day, it, didn't, it really doesn't feel like work because you're jamming. It's like a musician when they're uh, playing the drums and they're just jamming and it, it feels good and you see your goals are, are coming together and you're starting to live that lifestyle. It doesn't feel like you're working a 15-hour day. I totally agree with you. And I could compare it to, to like when you're in Vegas in the casino and you're enjoying like a blackjack game or a poker game. And before you know it, you've been at that table for five hours, six hours because you're enjoying it. I feel the same way. And I think that's when it comes down to like finding what you're passionate about, what moves you, what kind of calls your soul. I feel that same way when I'm you know, putting my show together because that's my passion. That's my goal when I'm putting stuff together for marketing, being creative, figuring out solutions to things. So is that one of the keys, kind of finding what your passion is? Because it's not fun to work 12-hour days when you're doing something that you're not enjoying, right? So I'm going to answer that the way one of my attorneys answers questions. He says, well, it depends, okay? <laughs> and uh, he has about 46 years of uh, experience, and I, and I remember I would ask him, I would say, Richard, is water good or bad? And he says, well, Hector, it depends. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? He's like, well, if you're thirsty, you know, water's good. Right. But if you're in the pool and you're drowning, then water's bad. Or if you have to pee in the, you know, bathroom's locked, yeah. water's bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right? So it depends. So I think a lot of the times people get caught up on, I got to find my passion. And especially the younger group, they're like, well, I don't know what I'm passionate about. That's okay. But get into any kind of business. And sometimes, you know, like for me right now, when I buy another apartment building, I don't close it and say, oh, yes, I got another apartment building. Yeah. But I like that wealth. I like that passive income. Right. So I like the end result. I like being able to take vacations and not having to work, okay? Um, so don't be so caught up on you got to find your passion. If you're lucky enough to find your passion, then you're blessed, okay? But experiment. Try one line of work. Try one, uh, one business. Give it all you got. If you end up deciding it's not for you, pivot and start another business. One of my mentors said, Hector, you're not an oak tree. You don't got to stay in one position your whole life, right. okay? We're, we're human beings we can try new things. So don't be afraid to make that pivot. Try one line of business. If it's not your passion, try something else, but experiment. Have a good time with it. Awesome. All right. Well, this has been very enlightening. You continually, you know, inspire me. You really, really uh, genuinely do. And like you said, surround yourself with those five or seven people um, and you're a combination of that. And I think that's one of the reasons we keep you know, in contact, you inspire me a lot. And thank you so much for this um, interview. How can other people find you, find your website? I understand you're also having a free free webinar. So everybody's always looking for a lifesaver, right? So that's why I have this right here, okay? This is a lifesaver. I'm throwing it at you to try and save you, okay? <laughs> so yes, I'm going to be doing a free webinar. I believe it's on May 24th. Correct. Thursday. Right? On, yeah, Thursday, May 24th at 6.30 p.m. Pacific. And um, I'm going to you know, give you guys more of my story and how I do deals, how I find the acquisitions, how I raise the money, um, how I find private funders, private investors, what my team is consisted of, 
how I started my acquisition firm, um, and I'll also answer a lot of questions on that uh, free webinar. So go ahead and sign up. And you sign up by going to your website, H, right? I, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> but you can email us at info at hpcinvestments.com. You can also visit my website. It's mychairman.net, mychairman.net. And you can also follow me on Instagram. And my Instagram is mychairmanhp, mychairmanhp on Instagram. You guys, thank you so much, Nabe. Thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. No, thank you, Hector. Always a pleasure to hang out here in the Hollywood Hills, <laughs> but poolside, drinking some coffee. I'm actually drinking vodka. This oh, is not no. water. <laughs> no. All right. Well, thank you so much. We're going to close off, and I will be reposting this interview. So if you guys missed any of it, you can rewind, etc. And um, I will also post the link to his website. And like I always say, make it a great day.